So you cultured the right kind of friendships. There's some people you long to see. Paul, he'd never seen these people, he'd, but he'd heard about them. He'd heard about their faith toward God and love toward all saints. He longed to be with them. Here's 2 Corinthians 9.14. By their prayer for you, this is the Macedonians, by their prayer for you, Corinthians, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. See, there's people who heard about Corinth and they were longing after his yearnings. He was longing after them for the grace to be cultured in them and develop in them. And you, good for you to ponder, like, who would I like to have God bestow a lot of grace on so they grow and advance and then yearn for that? Yeah. Here's another expression, Philippians 1.8. God is my record, how greatly I long for you. <laughs> Here I am in prison, I'm thinking about you. Most people be thinking about themselves. Here I am in prison, what am I going to do? I think I will think about the Philippians. That's what I will do. Yeah. Or for Epaphroditus, he did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2.26, he longed after you, for he is full of heaviness because you heard he'd been sick. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 was, he was sorry that you had to get a message like that. He was, he was sick on the death even, but God had mercy on him. Yeah. Now, on Paul also. But he, uh, he longed after them. He longed after you all. He was from there, see. He was, he was from their fellowship. Epaphroditus, and so he longed for them. How about the, to the Thessalonians? I'm talking about yearning now, this deep longing for God's people. How could you suppose a person who maybe once a week, if they didn't have anything else to do, maybe once a week they gathered with professing Christians. Now, how would you establish that they love the brethren? Like exactly, if you were in a courtroom, what kind of evidence would you bring forward? I don't want to be with them. I don't prefer them. My friends are somebody else. But see, and if this is a badge that substantiates yeah. that you belong to Christ, well, see, that, that makes it pretty important. Yeah. Here's what Paul said to the Thessalonians. Now, when Timotheus came from, uh, from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us. Mm -hmm. So they had this deep yearning to see Paul. Well, there's, a, there's some saints I have this deep longing for. How about this to Timothy? 2 Timothy 1.4, Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. This almost sounds like a contradiction. I'm mindful of your tears. I want to be filled with joy. Not that he wanted to come and see him cry. <laughs> that, that wasn't what he meant. He wanted to come to comfort him. And to let Tim, a young Timothy, Timothy was, we don't know how old he was, probably in his 30s, early 30s, they estimate. But he was a young young man, but he, he had such a tender heart that he wept about conditions. Not because he personally had been hurt. Some people, they only weep if they per, something personally yeah. happens to them. That's, that's the only reason they weep. But he was wept when others wept. And Paul, uh, Paul had a great desire to come and comfort him. Tell him something like, Timothy, it won't be long and, and joy is going to come in the morning. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Weep and may endure for the night, but don't forget joy is coming in the morning. He that brings goes forth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Yeah. yeah. And there's going to be no more tears. This is the only chance you have to cry, Timothy. So at least cry about the right thing. If this is the only opportunity you have to cry, cry about the right thing. And I yearn to be with you so that uh, reduce reduce your tears. I want, I want to relieve some of the sorrows that have been brought on by life. <laughs> There's also a desire for the sincere milk of the word, a yearning, deep yearning for the word of God. Most people that are that our Christians know that there's a, a very lot of disinterest in the Word of God, the Bible. And so they just cite people don't read the Bible enough, and we all ought to read the Bible some. And you can even buy books now that have like a six-minute devotion every day. And there's even one that's a one-minute. So you, they think that this is somehow like a sanctify everything, just because people don't want. They don't address the real situation is that people don't read the Bible because they don't want to read the Bible. Right. Or shall I say, let's, let's, be, let's be congenial about it. 
they don't want to read it bad enough. They just may say it that way, just to lighten kind of the indictment. But, but here's the word of God on the subject. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Uh, if, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. If you haven't, then that's the first thing. You've got you to get a good taste of the Lord first. Newborn babe, newborn babes, you you can't schedule a newborn babe as you, as the young mothers. <laughs> when they're ready to eat, they let you know. Yeah, the only time you have to let them know if they're ill or some abnormality, then then you have to wake them up. That's an abnormality. As newborn babes desire, that's the yearn. See, the sincere milk of the word, you may grow thereby. And you ask yourself the question like, how long, how long can I go? How long can I go without submitting my mind to the Word of God? Some few years ago, we had a, a person that was very dissatisfied with being among us. And uh, this person told me that God had revealed to her that I was a, a bad pastor. And she wanted to share with me the revelation that she had. I said, all right, so I took Brother Aaron's sister, Barbara. <laughs> I thought this would be a good education to see how people are. Mm -hmm. So she made known this great revelation that she had. And I asked her, I said, how long has it been since you have read the word of God or prayed? And she said, a year. Well, I said, then I can tell you what your problem is. So what I said, you're dead. Mm -hmm. You have died. Because man lives by every word of God. Amen. That's what your trouble is. Yeah. There's a lot of people in that state. Mm -hmm. They're dead because they haven't nourished their souls. Mm -hmm. But to, work, to subject yourself to God's word, you have to yearn. See? Mm -hmm. And how does that happen? By exposure to the promises of God which are the means by which we partake of the divine nature it's as what God has prepared for us is declared and told then the person who has tasted this has to be a person who's tasted the person who's tasted of the Lord this awakens this, this desire I know that many of you have experienced have okay. experienced this <clears throat> there's also this uh, the desire to seek for a better place a yearning that no matter how good it is here there's some people today that make a lot out of Abraham being rich. You know, they say he was rich and he was blessed. And he, was, he was rich, but he wasn't satisfied with this world. In fact, he, uh, he looked for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. They don't cite that text, I know. <laughs> they don't cite that text, but that text is there in yeah. Hebrews 11. It says of any of the earlier saints, we're speaking about yearning now, for they that say such things, that is, they confess of strangers and pilgrims on the earth, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And, and they desire a better country, it goes on to say in verse 15 and 16. They yearn for this. Why? Faith in God makes you a stranger in the world. Because faith is not calculated to adapt you to the world. Amen. Uh -huh. now, I don't know how old I was when this kind of began to dawn on me, but it, I'd been in Christ for some time. Because this isn't the way that the people I was with talked. They didn't talk this way. But yet I had had these feelings, but I, I didn't know, wasn't sure whether they were legitimate. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether they were legitimate or not. I wasn't trained in the way of righteousness as thoroughly as I should have been, but and I, for which I take credit for that. But now once I knew, knew about what God had prepared for them to love him, because he received the Holy Spirit that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, that's the first Corinthians 2, 11 and 12 says. So once you know this, then you yearn for this better, yeah. it's kind of like a utopia, but it's not a this world utopia, it's a that world. Utopia. That's yearning. Amen. Here, here's another expression of yearning. Philippians 3.8. 
Now, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the